Hey creatives, would you believe that this mixed media canvas board was made from bits and pieces from old projects that I've recycled into this whole new piece? I've built up lots of dimension and added a lot more texture and I'm going to share with you all of the techniques that I've used from start to finish. I've gone with a B theme for this mainly because I wanted to use the hexagon panel die again from Apple Blossom and you might remember this die from my 5 ways with background dies video. If not, then check that out, I've put it in the cards above. And this is my first bit of recycling because I'm die cutting this from some ordinary cardstock that I'd coloured with watercolour paints for a previous project. And for this project I want to keep both the negative and the positive die cuts and I'm also I'm going to need to die cut this twice so that we can get that great dimension in building this canvas. This canvas board is also recycled, it's one of my experimental boards so it just has a whole mass of different products on it where I've just tested them out to see how they look on the canvas. I'm going to use it just as it is but if you're using a recycled board and you're worried about seepage of layers as you add new layers, so colour coming through where you don't want it to, then it might be an idea to add a layer of gel medium and this will help cut down on that kind of seepage. So next up on my recycled bits and bobs are these chipboard alphas which strictly speaking aren't actually recycled because I've not used them in other projects but I'm getting to the point now where I no longer have all the letters that I need to spell out words so it's a case of cutting up the letters to make the letters that I need <laughs> Now I have my focal point roughly in place, I'm just going to use my eye to measure up how large I want my hexagon frame to be in that bottom left hand corner. And then I'll just trim it down to size with a pair of scissors. I'm building up the dimension with layers of die cuts and the first layer is going to sit just underneath the letters but for the second and the third layer I'm going to frame the letters. So for those two layers I actually need an L shape to fit in that left hand corner and around the word. And it just so happens that I managed to fit two L shapes from one die cut and I can use that first L shape that I've cut out to guide how to cut out the second one. Once I have all my pieces ready then it's time to clear the board and start gluing it all down. As this pre-used canvas board is kind of lumpy and uneven, I'm going to use a generous amount of gel medium to glue down my pieces and to make sure I've got good contact where I need it and for the layers as I layer up. Once the hexagon frame is down, I just want to make sure that I've got good definition in the negative space. So I'm using a piece of kitchen towel just to lift off the excess gel that's pooling where I don't need it to. And by using this dabbing motion, I'm also adding in some extra texture that is going to be very useful later on. Now it's time to add the letters again and I'm just going to reposition them first and then move them out of the way so that I can put them in one at a time. And I'm going to have to be very careful with the one that I've made out of two separate letters make sure that that one is nicely lined up so it doesn't look strange in the finished piece. So this time I'm covering both the board and the back of the letters with the gel medium. It's just a little easier to do that on the letters than it was to do it on the hexagon frame. And again I want to make sure I get good contact so that they're going to stick in place. <laughs>
final bit of dimension I'm going to add to this board is by using those little cut out hexagons. So I'm just going to put them down, lining them up by eye. And the great thing about layering these ones up is that you can alter how many layers you use and that adds another interesting dimension to this piece. adding the other dimension building up the hexagons is a little bit time consuming and fiddly so I have speeded this up quite a lot and cut some of the layers out but you get the general idea of how I put this together and the effect is well worth it in the end Now to even out the lettering, make it all look nice and equal and add an extra bit of texture to it, I'm going to use some light moulding paste. And this is going to be perfect for hiding that join line on that cut up letter. You now need to let everything dry completely before moving on to adding the paint. So if you can, leave it overnight. If not, make sure that you have left it a good few hours. So I hadn't actually picked the colours for this project at this point. So for my first layer, all I'm going to do is a very neutral light layer. And I'm going to use white and a buff colour for this. This is just going to even off the whole board and quieten down any of the colours that are already on there. And if you watch carefully just under those two letter E's, you can see some pink streaks seeping through. And that's what I was talking about with the layer underneath coming through to these other layers. I have no recollection at all what those products actually were that were on this board when I started. And I picked this board because I wanted the texture to just add extra interest to the finished item. So I'm not particularly worried about this seepage, but it is something to think about when you reuse any canvases or work that you've done before. And if you don't want it coming through and adding to your final piece, then you will need to seal that layer first. Again let this layer dry completely before you move on to your next layer. I still wasn't sure what colours I wanted to use so in the end I let the board inspire my colour choices. And you might be able to spot there's a green, there's that red pink streak but there's also a blue colour on there as well. So I decided to go for some darker versions of those three colours. So you want to make sure you get a good coverage of paint and work your brush into those cracks and crevices that have formed between the board and the dimension you've put in because you want those areas to be the darkest. The flatter areas, they can be a little bit lighter to add a contrast. Also don't forget to do the edges of your canvas as you work your way round. And you'll also notice as I'm doing this that I use that lovely turquoise blue colour as a buffer between the emerald green and that dark red as I don't want to risk those two colours mixing and muddying the look. to want to let this layer dry completely before moving on to the next layer. 
for this layer I'm going to use dry brushing and it's a perfect technique for just highlighting all that wonderful texture. So I've gone back to the white colour and the buff colour that I used in my first layer and this is going to contrast really nicely with those dark tones. With dry brushing it's all about controlling how much paint you put onto the surface. So start with a really, really small amount of paint on your brush. And if you're using a brush that has been wet, then make sure you remove all the moisture from it with a kitchen towel. And a kitchen towel comes in handy again if you have got areas where you've put just a little bit too much paint on. You can lift off some of that paint using a damp piece of kitchen towel or cloth. Dab off the paint you don't need and try not to overwork the area as you may lose that texture that you're aiming for. You don't want the light paint to work into those cracks and crevices that you're trying so hard to keep dark. You really want it to sit on the surface and just highlight the raised areas of the texture. If I go close up, then you can see I really do have a very small amount of paint on my brush. So I've picked up the paint on the palette and then wiped the brush across the palette to remove most of that paint and to make sure that it's evenly spread across that whole brush. And when I start adding that paint onto the canvas, I'm actually holding the brush almost parallel to the canvas itself so that it just sweeps across the raised areas. As the paintbrush empties, you can then start raising the paintbrush upwards and you can apply more pressure at this point as well. When you start, you want to be applying a really light pressure. And then you just keep repeating this process until you're happy with the effect. the dry brushing layer has dried really quickly because it was on quite thinly so you can go in and put any extra details you wanted to and you don't have to wait around too long so I decided I was going to add some circles to this particular piece bring those two hexagon areas together and highlight the lettering even more so for this I thought I'd start with some black paint and apply it with a brush and again it's reflecting the texture that was already down on this canvas board right from the start I then added in some white highlights and then went back over the area with some splatters. But I soon decided that I wasn't that happy with the circles so I went back over them again with white paint and finished them instead with a brush pen. way of using up old projects, those experimental works, little bits and pieces left over from other projects that you know you just can't bring yourself to throw out. You can easily recycle them all into new projects like this dimensional canvas board. And hopefully this has inspired you to add some dimension to your work this week and also to have a play with some dry brushing. There's something really fun about watching that texture kind of develop as you dry brush it. So if you enjoyed my video and found it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up and let me know what texture you'll be adding in your next project. I would really love to hear and you can always share your work with me by tagging me in on social media. All of my links are below. Plus, don't forget to subscribe for your weekly dose of art, inspiration, tips and tricks. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week with some more creative sharing.